Good afternoon, welcome to the Inspiring Inkin Facebook page and YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Amanda Fowler and today is Tuesday the 19th of October. If you're here live, could you let me know where you're joining me from? And if you're watching the replay, thank you so much for joining me. Do leave a comment. I do respond to every single one of them. So a little bit about this afternoon or this replay, if that's what you're watching. I, it's called Craft and Chat. So there is some chatting at the beginning and then there'll be some crafting a little bit later on. So the first 20 minutes or so, we will be chatting. So if you just want to fast forward to the crafting, then you can do that as well. I have lots of videos on YouTube, so do check out the rest of my channel for some more creative inspiration. So I've got my coffee, I've got some crafting, I've got some cards, and I've been adventuring again. Brian and I have had a few days off. So if you have emailed me recently, I will get to them, but I needed to come here and hang out with you first. So let's have a look. Roz is here. She's saying good afternoon to everybody. Lorraine is. Joan is. Joan, I have an email from you. Um, I will get a catalogue in the post to you. I think somewhere along the line, um, one's obviously not got to you. So I will get that sorted out. Um, let's have a look. Anne is here. Claire, actually, I'm going to move my, I'm going to move my computer. So I'm not looking at a weird angle. Is that better? Because then I'm looking at you, <laughs> looking straight down the camera, but I can actually see the comments as well. So let's see who else is here. Claire's here. She's in Buckinghamshire. Jen's here. Good to see you too. Jen, are you all better now? Judith is here. I hope you're all better as well. <laughs> Hello, Rosie and Joanne and Mina. Mina, I need to talk to you as well about um, an order. So I will email you. Alberta is in the house. Deborah's here. Janet's here. She's saying hello to all the crafty friends too. Stella's here. So Texas is in the house as well. Hello, Margaret. Good afternoon, Karen and Anne. So how are how are you all? So let me know what adventures you've been on since, <laughs> since last Tuesday. Have you been anywhere? Um, I know quite a few people have been poorly. I've been, been getting all sorts of, of messages with people, um, you know, not being able to collect things or just, you know, let me know that they haven't been very well. Um, some people have had COVID. Some people are, are having a bit of a, a weird cough and cold that isn't COVID. Um, so if you are feeling poorly or under the weather, I'm sending you a big hug and I hope you feel better soon. Hi, Paul. Lovely to, to see you again today. Jen's feeling much better. That is good. A little way to go yet. Okay. Oh, Judith. <laughs> Judith and her husband have escaped COVID, but the rest of the family have all had it. <gasps> Stella's saying her youngest daughter got married and we survived. <laughs> was there any doubt, Stella? <laughs> was it was it was it a bit stressful? I don't, I don't need to know that my daughter's getting married in September. So I'm hoping that that's not going to, it's not going to be stressful. Hello, Julia and Lucianne and Margaret um, has been two lovely days near West Bay and plenty of coastal walks. That sounds awesome. So I have been adventuring with Brian and the kids and actually all of my family. So it was my dad's 80th birthday on Friday. So 
he didn't know we were going to visit and mum only knew that Brian and I were going. But we, we'd been plotting for some time. So Brian and I, Connor and his girlfriend Lydia and Kimberly and her fiance Dom all arrived um, at the little bed and breakfast that we stay at on late on Thursday evening and so we all surprised dad by walking through the door on Friday and we've just we've just had a lovely lovely time so they live on the Lincolnshire coast so we've had um trips out walks we've gone <laughs> we've gone window shopping we've gone to the beach we've had some wonderful meals we've had stories and laughter and it's it's been wonderful lots and lots of memories to be sure um we've had a really lovely time and you know it, it was great because i haven't seen the kids since the summer so um that was really good and then on friday evening my brother and sister-in-law and one of my nephews joined us as well which was brilliant and the only nephew the only one that was missing um was my nephew josh who's just started at university and he was in lectures so he couldn't join us but um you know wonders of technology he was kind of there on the webcam on the you know on the phone as well so it was like we were all together so that was amazing and then we spent sort of a day with brian's parents kind of on the way back so we've done a lot of traveling we didn't get in until I don't know, after midnight last night. So if I'm looking a bit bleary, it's because we've had busy, busy days and lots of traveling, but it was wonderful. So now I've got to catch up. So let's see. <laughs> Stella said her, the, the wedding was a tad stressful, but definitely worth it. Anne has been very brave and she's booked a foreign holiday for November. She's going to Belgium. <laughs> Karen was saying it was her birthday on Friday, but not her 80th. She went to Wisley Gardens for an autumn food festival. Oh, that sounds exciting. You know me, I love a food festival. <laughs> Were your ears burning, Mum? Pauline's here. But for those of you that don't know, that's my mum. Just been telling everybody about our, our crazy, crazy weekend. Oh, so yeah. So exactly as Judith says, there's nothing like a family get together, especially at the moment. And, you know, I think... I think we've come so far, haven't we? You know, it's 18 months, 20 months, however long this darn COVID has been around. And, you know, I'm never never going to take for granted again being able to all hang out together. Um, you know, it's it's never never take for granted a hug either. So there were plenty of those. Plenty of hugs, plenty of laughter, plenty of crying with laughter <laughs> or laughing with, well, anyway, whatever way around it was, there were tears and laughter at the same time. So, yeah, it was it was wonderful. So what else do I have to tell you today? I have emailed. Now, I don't know what's going on with the emails. It's because I've been on holiday. So... The email that should have come out on Friday telling you about Dad's birthday went out for some reason this morning. Not sure why. Um, anyway, so you'll have got that and you'll have got the post that was the, the, the email yesterday um, with information about the notebooks from the week before. And then I have sent you an email, if you've not opened it up yet, to say, do not do any stamping up shopping today. You're banned. <laughs> nobody's, nobody's shopping today, Tuesday, the 19th of October, 2021. I'm saying that in case you're watching the replay. Um, 
So today, no, yeah. Mm. So today at 11 p.m., if you're in the UK, if you're in another time zone, you'll have to Google what time it is. But, um, <coughs> excuse me, 11 p.m. tonight, there is a sale starting and it's a 24 hour like flash sale and it is every single cling stamp set in this book now a cling stamp set isn't that <laughs> So these are photopolymer, the clear ones are photopolymer, the cling are the red rubber ones. So like that. So all of the red rubber stamps have got 15% off. So the way you can tell in the catalogue, so just, ooh, hang on. <laughs> I'm not sure where I'm pointing. So can you see just down, down there? It says Beautiful Moments, which is the name of the stamp set. And underneath it, it says 11 cling stamps. Yeah, just here, look. 11 cling stamps. So just go through the catalogue. Have a look at your favourite stamps and then make your list. So 15% off, which is brilliant. But from 11pm tonight until 10.50pm Wednesday the 20th of October. So for my North American friends... It will be midnight to midnight for you guys in mountain time, I'm guessing. Um, and for my European friends, it'll be midnight to midnight if you're in France, Germany, Austria, or the Netherlands, which are the only countries that can, can shop with me. So um, if you're not sure when the sale starts, just send me an email and I will help. Um, but the world clock, there's, a, there's like an app on Google. Um, the world clock will tell you and give you the right the right time. But as well as as well as stamping up, giving you a sale, my book off is still running. So let's just see. Ah, uh, there we go. Look. So you can. You can see all of the information about my bog off on my website and there's a link there. And if you place an order in the sale tomorrow on my Stampin' Up! store, you can shop for the same amount for free in my bog off store. And I've got hundreds of items. Hundreds have gone, <laughs> but there are hundreds still. And I'd really like you to have them because I'd really like the space in the rooms <laughs> where all the boxes of them are. Because, you know, Christmas is coming. The kids are going to be visiting. And currently you can't get into one of the bedrooms <laughs> because of all the boxes. So I need you to help. I need you to have some free stuff. So let's see what else. Ooh, I've lost my comments. Hang on. Kathy Jean's here from Canada. And Deborah's here. Hello, hello. Oh, Joanne, I'm so sorry. Joanne's not getting any adventures. Her hubby's got long COVID. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's, it's horrid, isn't it? Horrid, horrid. So let's just take that way. Okay. 
So let me show you. I've got a couple of cards to show you that have popped through my letterbox this week. <laughs> so this is this is from one of my team, the lovely Sally. Now she's made this in a in a wreath shape, and I did share this a little while ago. Um, being able to do this with your stamparatus. Um, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to show you again, because obviously Christmas is coming and making wreaths is really nice. I know this is kind of a summery spring type wreath, but um, if you're interested, then let me know. And then this one is from Deborah. This is super cool. So you've got so much texture and stuff going on here with, with all of the stamping and the colours. This is one of my favourite sets. Love this. So thank you very much, Deborah. Hello, Marlene. Thanks for joining us today. Right. Um... Just checking that I haven't got anything else to say. <laughs> Judith is saying Stamparatus practice is always very welcome. So um, for those of you that don't know what the Stamparatus is, it is the bomb. It is the best tool ever. Um, let me see if I can get you a picture. Da -da -da. There you go. It's this up here. And there are so many things that you can do with it. But the best thing you can do with it is stop messing up your stamping. <laughs> because um, it has a platform on it and you can press down your stamping. If you've got a bit of a wobble or you catch your stamping sometimes or you smudge it, um, it works really great for that. It's fantastic for doing multiples of things. If you're doing lots and lots of, of um, invitations, like a wedding invitation or a Christmas card or that kind of stuff that you're repeat stamping, it's brilliant. Um, if you're like putting your sentiment on and you don't quite ink it up enough, you can re-ink it and go back over the same thing. And you can do super cool, fancy techniques with it. Um, there are several uh, videos on YouTube. If you go to Inspire and Inking, um, there are several videos that I've done. Um, but maybe I'll do the wreath one as well. And I'm going to try not to sneeze. <laughs> that would be very very bad. Oh, right. Okay. Um, Jenny's here from Perth. Wet and windy. That's not, that's not good, Jenny. You're supposed to be going into your summer. <laughs> Why is it wet and windy? Um, it's wet and windy here as well. Um, Gillian is in a very wet Northern Ireland as well. Yeah. I am good. <laughs> I'm just, I'm really need, to, I'm good to get the camera turned around because you do not need to see me actually sneeze. Okay, so I'm going to move my computer out of the way, turn the camera around and then we'll, we'll get, get doing some crafting. So let's move that cover over the camera oh. Ta -da. and let's get some stamp sets out oh that's just a bit wonky there we go that's just weird not sure why that's so wonky today Right, 
And there we go. So I'm using two of my favourite stamp sets. <coughs> I've got all of <laughs> Lots of stamps on the blocks. And I've got three colours of ink. So I've got Cherry Cobbler. I've got Garden Green and I've got Shaded Spruce. And what I'm actually going to do, so the, the title of today's Craft and Chat was Making Your Own Patterned Paper. And... This is something that we did at our Christmas retreat um, a couple of weeks ago where we took a piece of paper and we made it into a patterned paper and then cut it for a card. And I just want to show you how quickly and easily you can do that. So I'm going to show you this card. So this is the card that I'm actually going to make. So this is, it's a Z fold card. And, and the reason obviously is the, the shape of it. And there's patterned, pa there's stamped paper here and here and here. Now, if you're just making one card like this, what you would do, and in the in the details of this Facebook Live and YouTube, I will actually put up um, all the measurements when I finished. Um, but what you would do is you would cut all of your layers for the card and then stamp them. And, you know, that that's OK. That just takes a little bit of time. But it is so much faster to take a sheet of card and stamp on it. And that will give you, you know, a whole sheet of patterned paper. So I just wanted to show that show you that so what i'm going to do is go and put my grid paper underneath and i'm going to get all of my stamps out thank that so linda is wishing dad a happy birthday thank you linda Lorraine saying yes, please, to the wreath. And Jenny's saying she's fed up because it's been wet for weeks. Okay, so I've got a variety of leaves. And I'm just going to start with one of them. And guess who... Guess who has re-inked her ink pads and over-inked them? Look. Look at the state of that. How ridiculously inky is that? So, <laughs> I do this so often. I should just put a tiny bit on. And then I wouldn't re-ink it. I wouldn't over-ink it. Right, I'm going to have to take a bit more ink off. So basically what I've done is I've just put too much ink on and it's flooding the stamp. And what it actually does is it loses the definition. Yeah. That's so much better. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I've got a bit an A4 piece of cardstock, and I am just going to randomly stamp all over. 
Now, it's a good plan to either turn your stamp around or turn your paper around. And you want to make sure that some of the images go off the edge and some of the images come in from the edge. Okay. Then I'm going to take another leaf. And it doesn't matter if they overlap, don't worry about that. And actually, it doesn't matter too much if you've got any smudges because you can stamp over things as well. This is the sort of fern. No, not fern, fir tree. Now, I'm just going to bring in a piece of card just to show you. So, in this stamp set, this is the Christmas season stamp set. You've got this stamp here and the berries. And the berries are designed to go on this stalk here. And can you see on the berries, you've got three berries in a line. And here, you've actually got three stalks in a line. So you need to stamp the berries on top of the stalks, but just make sure you're, you're running along that line there. So I'm going to stamp the stalks first. So I'll just show you. So I stamp the stalks and then I stamp the berries. Now, <laughs> I'm probably going to end up maybe with my head in the picture so I just look over the top and then you can get your berries on your stalks so let's do some of that And this is where it's actually going to come alive because at the moment everything is green. And although I really like that, <laughs> the red will make it pop. Now, depending on how big or small your pieces of card are going to be that you're going to cut, later on depends on how full you want this um, sheet to be so you will see that it's actually going to look quite busy but that is because I know that some of these pieces of card can you see that's actually quite small so I need to make sure I've filled it up. Ooh. That's me getting the, getting green on top of my cherry cobbler. That would have been a bit rubbish. had a chat with one of my customers um, this afternoon. Um, I, was, I was sorting out an order for her. And she is going to see Cliff Richard in concert. And she was saying he is 81. And he's still gigging. <gasps> Mm. 
Look what happened. Look. It actually did go on the garden green that time. It's because I was chatting about Cliff Richard. Hopefully nobody will notice. I'm just going to go over it. It's just a bit darker. Cherry cobbler. Um, yeah. I thought that was amazing. I hadn't realised that he was still gigging. Right. Just going to do... <laughs> it's finding where I've put all of these berries. Turn it around again. Deborah's saying that they're just unripe berries, those ones. Hi, Donna. Thanks for joining us today. How are you? Okay. So I think, I think that's all of them. So now I need to go and put some more leaves in. Fill in these gaps. Do, do, do. And then I might have to put in a few smaller ones. You will get to a point where you're looking at it and you're going, oh, where shall I put another leaf? Um, usually at that point, I would suggest that you stop because the next one that you put down is probably just going to be one too many. What I don't want is anything too, any any sort of real big gaps. But I think, I think we're pretty much there. What do you think? I wish we were on, on, on pointing TV because then you can, you can say, <gasps> Put some there. Okay. That's very cool. Now there is, um, in this stamp set, I'm not going to use it today, but there is this like little, little splats. And this is great for filling in the teeny tiny bits. And actually I can just see a couple. Basis. Okay, now something that I always do, and I often, I often talk about it um, in my lives and in my classes. But I always, at this point, once I've finished stamping, I do try and clean my hands. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go and wash my hands now. But I am going to get the worst the worst of the ink off on my fingers. I'm just going to clean these stamps off because what happens is you do all your stamping and then if you're not careful, you end up ruining your card with an inky splat. So... Okay, I'm going to just close those ink pads. I need 
Oh, oh, oh. I need to stamp the greeting and punch that out. And that greeting, this is the two and a quarter inch circle punch. So it fits beautifully there. And yeah, so I'll clean that off. Close that one up. Move that out of the way. Use my chamois on my desk because I've got ink splats here. So I do need to make sure that I'm just protecting a bit of card now because that's wet now. There we go. Okay. So like I said before, I will um, give you all of the, the measurements. But this is basically half a sheet of cards so whichever whichever size of card you have it's half a sheet like that so you get two and you score it in half and then you score it in half again now if you've got 12 by 12 card stock that's super easy because it's four inches by 12 inches and you score it at six and at nine. Um, but if you've got standard A4 or eight and a half by 11, you're just going to cut it in half, score it in half, and so on. So let's sort out these pieces. I may well have to. Sort out my layers. Bear with me a second. I've had one of those mornings where all of my measurements and things just didn't happen. So that's that. That's that size. Right. Let me just get the original card back in. So I'm going to need some extra pieces. So this section here on my card and my ruler's gone, but I've got grid paper. So on my card, this is four and a quarter inches. by three and then four inches by two and three quarters just check that yeah so this piece of cardstock is going to be two and a half inches by three and three quarter inches then these pieces here they will be so the cherry cobbler is two and a half inches by three and three quarter inches. But the vanilla layer here is two and a quarter inches by three and a half inches. So I need two pieces that size and then or one piece that size. And I'm just going to obviously cut it from this. Oops. 
so we want three and three quarter inches so we want two pieces that are two and a quarter inches wide so now you can see why it's so important that you fill up the space because otherwise you just won't have enough um, interest in that space So this piece is going on there and on there. And then these pieces are not quite the right size. Oh, shoot me now. <laughs> Ew. They're going to be two and a half, oh, two and three quarters, oh, three and a half even. <laughs> so Judith and Margaret and Rosa are all saying this is looking good. Oh, I am pleased that you like this. I'll just cut these cherry cobbler pieces down. So they will fit as well. So that's two and a half by three and three quarters. So that's this piece. So that's all my layers. Now, the only other thing in this original card, you will see that I stamped here. Now, obviously, I could do that on the, when I had all the stamps out, I could do that. But what I'm actually going to do is just use one of the offcuts to decorate um, on on the one that I'm doing now because you'll you'll see that then obviously you're going to get so much more out of that one sheet so this is what I've got left so I've used about a third to make this card which is really cool so let's do some assembly get my glue Kathy Jean said she's never made her own own patterned paper. Well, there you go. I hope that you are going to enjoy doing that then. And the thing is that the awesomeness that is stamping up means that we have coordinating patterned paper to go with our cardstock. But sometimes you just don't have the right pattern or the right color to go with whatever project it is that you're designing. So this way you can just take any stamps and make something of your own. Let's just take this piece and pop that on there. Oop. And then, yeah, that's the insert. And I'm just going to pop that down there like that. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy and Margaret. I'm so pleased that you like it. Let's just put these 
layers in. So this obviously is your inside layer. You've got these two pieces that form the front and the, the opening section. <laughs> and so she loves it. She hadn't thought about making her own paper. Hooray! There you go. So that's kind of the, the main part of it. I've just got to restamp that. Look at that. Can you see? Look, I've got a hair. There's a hair on that stamp. Let's do that again, shall we? We'll clean that stamp off. Let's see. Let's see if that works better. Yeah. got ink all over my fingers again now. There we go. Get some foam pads and by a miracle <laughs> the dodgy berries that are sort of darker because I stamped the wrong colour. Look! Huzzah! That's going to that's going to cover it. And actually, I think what I might do is do it that way so that the berries are off on this side. OK, so we're going to pop some dimensionals down. And stick this down. And then the one tricky part of this is making sure that you don't stick the whole thing together. So the card itself, move that out of the way, the card itself obviously folds like this. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to stick that down over the top because what's going to happen is you're never going to open the card. So you need to work out where you want to position this. And what I do is I grab, I'm, I'm trying to do it with <laughs> without covering over what I'm doing, is to grab that bit. That's where the glue is going to go. So I'm holding it. So I turn it over and I put glue in the right spot. because you don't want the glue to overflow. And just make sure it's sort of positioned fairly evenly. Da, da, da. And it's stuck down. So let's, ooh, glue on my fingers. Here we go. It's just such a cool thing to make your own paper. So here's the other, here's, here's the rest of the sheet. I'm just going to move everything out of shot. Um, and obviously that's, that's my sort of original card. But it just shows you that, you know, if you spent a couple of minutes making your own patterned paper you'd be able to make so many of these so quickly let's move this out of the way so what other what other stamps do you think that you could you could use call me out some stamp sets let's have a look let's <laughs> 
Let's see if we can find some stamp sets in the catalogue that would work that are going to be on sale tomorrow. Some of your favourite stamps. I'm just going to keep telling you. Okay, so here you go. Quiet Meadow. Tasteful Touches. Love this one. Let's see what else. Oh, Forever Fern, says Carol. Let's find that one. Forever Fern. That is on page 71. That's such a cool set. Look at that. And it's got the little splats as well, which works really, really well. This one's really nice too, elegantly said. That will work. Do you know what? You could do it with the puffins. <laughs> so it would work really well because you can put in the, the puffins and the candles and the cake and the fish just make sure that when th the way that I did this obviously I was turning the stamps and I was turning the paper around so make sure that you do that so if you've got something like the puffins that are directional make sure you've got them going in all directions because then it won't matter whether or not um they're the right way round. Oh, I'm turning the pages. See whichever ones. Do, do, do. See if I can find one more. Daisy Lane. How about that? Oh, and the sunflower. Hang on. Sunflowers, they're clear. Do, do, do. I don't know what it's called. Who can tell me what the... Ninety-seven. What the uh, sunflower stamp set is? Da, 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 da. This is so annoying. I should be able to tell you which one this is. So, well. Butterfly Brilliant. Oh, Butterfly Wishes. Yes. They will both work. And then we'll finish up with <gasps> Dragonfly Garden. Because if you haven't got this stamp set yet, why not? <laughs> Dragonflies should be in everybody's stash. Um, so this will, will work really well because you've got the big images. But you've also got the smaller butterfly image. The, although this is quite a large image, it's actually, you know, a similar size to some of these leaves. So it will work. You just have to kind of be careful where you position it or just use the dragonflies and the butterflies. So, so many options. Okay, so... I am going to love you and leave you for today. If you've got any crafting requests, whether that's um, techniques or card styles or Amanda, I'd like to see more cards for men or cards with butterflies on or whatever it is, send me, send me an email. Let me just pull up my email address so you know 
um, how to reach me. I'm trying to type and talk, okay? That does not go well because I don't want to type the wrong email address. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> Hurrah. So e if you email me and just title the email Craft and Chat and let me know anything that you would be interested in seeing. That just means I then I have a great big long list to work from, which is fabulous. And uh, I can pick some different techniques and different things to show you. So let's see, celebrate sunflowers. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> that was the one I couldn't remember. Um, thank you, Anne and Roz and Margaret and Anne. Um, lovely afternoon, said Jen. Thank you. Marlene saying lovely ideas. Thank you. You are so very welcome. I am thrilled that you enjoyed today. So take care. Um, take care until I see you next week. As always, I am live on Facebook and on YouTube at two o'clock UK time every Tuesday. So I will see you again next week. Till then, goodbye.